guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm just gonna do a couple mini reviews of books that I received for review that have been released recently that I think you guys need to check out. The first book that I want to talk about is called Uncharted by Aaron Cashman. So I found out about this because I was watching a live stream with Sarah Glenn Marsh who wrote Reign of the Fallen and Fear the Drowning Deep, both of which I loved, and she raved about this book. Like she got a really early manuscript I think because she's friends with the author and she said this was a book to look out for. So I immediately requested an arc of it and I pre-ordered it. Like, I have two copies of this now. It's a little obscene. This is an author I think we need to keep an eye out for because this is her debut book. It's a super unique story. It follows kind of a Lost City of Atlantis vibe and I didn't know what to expect going into it other than just kind of like the atmosphere of the book is like eerie and it's like a coastal New England town and mysterious things happen at this manor and that's kind of all I knew. So going into it as the mystery was like unraveling it was so intriguing and so unique for YA. So this kind of follows a girl whose mother has passed away and she moves with her father to stay with family friends of theirs, like of her parents that her parents were friends with as they grew up, because those two parents have also passed away recently. And there's a lot of ominous things that happen. There's a lot of like missing parents, but not done as a trope, but done as a main plot point in the story. Basically, we're following this girl and this boy who is a son of the recently deceased parents as they are kind of unraveling the mystery of what is happening to their parents and what their parents did in the past to cause these things to happen to them. Was that the worst description ever? possibly. Basically, their parents all have these matching tattoo symbols on them. They're not willing to talk about their past excursions. Everybody knew that they did a lot of like exotic traveling and they were very into like the mythology of hidden islands and there's maps. It was just awesome. So pros for this book, I love the setting. It's a very kind of eerie manor estate type setting on like the New England coast. And at the same time you get mysterious missing island vibes with a touch of like European more Irish culture influence in it which I loved. I liked a slow burn romance that was in this because it's YA. We gotta have some romance in it. Cons. I think the writing was a little bit weak because the story was well developed in the present time but I feel like there was a lot of info dumping in the dialogue. As in like you found out a lot of what was happening to these parents as they just kind of spouted out these facts that I don't think would have actually naturally happened in conversation. So that's my only con for it. But I think as like a story creator, storyteller, Erin Cashman I think is a very unique writer and I think she's definitely somebody to watch out for as her writing develops. So I gave this three stars. Definitely recommend checking it out if you were kind of interested in a very unique mysterious adventure type story, definitely check this out. The next book I want to talk about is going to take a very different turn and that is Christina Lauren's latest novel which is Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating. This is possibly, I don't know, I still love autobiography by them. I feel like that is such like an impactful story but as far as new adult goes this is my favorite one that they have ever written. I adored every second of this book. I flew through this in like a day I just, I adore these characters so much. This is just a new adult fluffy romance, just like a lot of Christina Lauren's books normally are, but I feel like the characters are what made this. So Hazel is like our protagonist. We're switching perspectives between Josh and Hazel as this book progresses, and Hazel is just this eccentric, in-your-face, loud character. And I feel like you read about a lot of those, but they don't seem authentic. She is genuine, and I just, she made me laugh the entire book. Her, the things that she did, her pets, everything about this girl is like modern, crazy, eccentric girl. And I loved it. And the main plot of this book is that she has known Josh, who is like the love interest in this story, um, for years. So they went to college together and he was just kind of this like epitome of amazing man in her life that she never planned on dating, she never wanted to date. Um, and she ends up like through a weird series of events ends up moving in with him and they help each other setting each other up on blind dates but they're slowly falling for each other and their I, their romance is just so good it's not a stereotypical new adult just like bad boy type of romance or like dark past type of romance these are very real and very modern characters and I laughed through this entire thing 
every single character in this book I adored. I loved it. I gave it four stars. Highly recommend checking this out. The next book that I want to talk about is A Room Away from the Wolves by Nova Rensuma. Nova Rensuma is an autobi author for me. Her writing is just so unique, and it's been so long since we've gotten a new work from her. The last one that she released was The Walls Around Us, and that book blew my freaking mind. Like, it was... It was so good and dark and twisted. Her writing, it doesn't flow like normal YA. It's very bizarre, it's very stilted, and just, it's an experience. I think of her kind of similarly to like the Neil Gaiman of YA, where she doesn't follow a normal plot, she doesn't follow any sort of normal characters, and you just kind of have to accept it and go along for the ride, and I love it. So this book is following a girl who is being sent away basically by her mother, and we don't really get much of her past in this story, except that her mother was at one point at this home for women, kind of one of those secure homes that is provided for women who are escaping like domestic abuse cases, things like that. We know that her mother was there until she was 18, and then she had Bina, who is our main character, and her mother sent her away from her new family. She married this guy who has another daughter, or other daughters, I think there's two, and she basically just kind of sends her away. And like I said, you just kind of have to go along for the ride in her books, and this girl takes it upon herself to go to this home that her mother was at to kind of learn her mother's history and find herself, and when she gets there, it's very creepy. You kind of get Miss Peregrine's vibe in this, like Home for Peculiar Children, you know the book I'm talking about? You kind of get vibes like this because it's like a boarding house, but a lot of weird ghosty type things happen, like the eyes in portraits that are on the wall follow you and mysterious objects appear, and there's just this like mysterious lore of Catherine, who is the founder of the Catherine's House for Girls, and her backstory, and she's kind of haunting this place. It is wild. I have no idea how to describe Nova Rensuma's writing other than you just have to experience it. This was not my favorite one by her, but it still had some unbelievably lyrical writing in it. Like, some of her sentences that she puts together, I don't know how she forms them, but she must be like a fairy or something because her writing is just beautiful and I will read everything that she writes. And the last book that I want to talk about is Annalie in Real Life, and this is by Janelle Mullanes. So this book is going to fall kind of in the vein of fangirl and Eliza and her monsters and things of that nature, which I eat up. I love stories about like nerdy girls expressing their passion and kind of like coming into their own socially while they are still embracing their geeky side. I just, I love stories like that. They just, they represent me because I'm a very nerdy person. I just adore it. This is following Annalie whose mother passed away a couple years ago and her father has started dating this newer, younger woman who while that sounds like a very tropey situation, I actually really respected what the author did with this new, like, stepmother figure. She's not obnoxious, she's not a bimbo, and she is authentic and loving and welcoming, and we're just kind of following Annalie as she navigates this, like, weird turmoil part of her life, along with high school and starting to have feelings for this guy who she thought was a douchebag for a very long time. Meanwhile, she is balancing this with playing kind of a World of Warcraft type of game online with her forever crush, this guy named Harris that she has been playing this game with who she talks to all the time and is madly in love with, but they've never met in person. So it's kind of, it almost turns into a love triangle, but not really. I know, don't cringe, don't turn away from this video because I said that. But what I loved the most about this book, besides like that basic plot, because that is a plot I will always read and love, I loved that these characters were very real. Anna Lee has a lot of internal monologue that happens that is a very realistic representation of a girl with social anxiety, who is kind of thrust into situations she can't control, but she doesn't act out like a lot of teenagers do in YA books, and she's pretty respectful about how she acknowledges things that are happening around her, even if she disagrees with them. I just, I feel like the writing of these characters was so authentic to a modern day teenager who is kind of living in this like online world, this crush that she has built up on a pedestal that she's never met in real life, and actually accepting that everybody isn't as they seem, and I feel like that's a theme through this entire book because she isn't just this quiet, nerdy girl. She has a lot of thoughts that she just doesn't express when she's in public, 
And same with this like douchey guy that she kind of starts working with. She realizes that he's not really just this stuck up jock. There's a lot more to him than she expected. So it kind of breaks down the barriers of what all of the tropes that are in YA really are. Like the new stepmother kind of just trying her hardest to get Annalie to accept her and their relationship just seems very real to me. <sighs> I love this book. I gave this five stars. Out of these four books, I think that this is the one that I feel the strongest about. And I really hope that more people pick this up. I just, I adored it. I adored every single second of it. All these characters felt so fleshed out and real to me. Read this book. The end. So those are my thoughts on four recent releases. I believe these all came out on Tuesday of last week. So you should be able to run to your store and pick them up now. But they are just four books that I just, I've had a lot of thoughts about and I just wanted to express them in a video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in my next one.